You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. Hey folks, welcome back to the Shoe In Show. Thanks for joining us this week. As always, we try to talk about new innovations and, and new occurrences in the footwear industry and the footwear space. Um, and one of those things that we've been covering a lot over the last couple of years is sustainability. Um, but I, I, we always try to couch this, that sustainability is innovation. Like it's one and mm. the same because sustainability is about optimizing. It's about reducing. It's about creating efficiencies. Um, and one of our great partners, um, Lensing, um, has been working with us for a couple of years now trying to help educate the industry more about different ideas and different ways of being more sustainable, but also developing product materials uh, that have been game changers um, in terms of, uh, I think most people would know it as tensile, um, but in terms of using that in footwear products to reduce their footprints um, and especially around like carbon. So um, a couple of years ago, they, uh, Lensing introduced uh, they kind of launched this zero, uh, this carbon zero tensile program. Um, and today we have uh, one of the leaders of that um, who's going to share a little about what it is, uh, why it's important in shoe companies, but also hopefully we can talk a little bit about how it came about. These are, it's a, you know, these are tough things. These are tough innovations. And so this show really is a, like allowing us to peel back the onion and kind of look at that. So Matt, if you want to introduce our guest today, we'd love to jump into it with her. Yeah, man, I want to peel back a lot of onions because sustainability has a ton of onions, <laughs> layers to peel back. So now Carolyn Liedel, who is at Linsing, who's uh, head of product management and textiles and one of their lead innovators at Linsing, has joined us. And if I'm not mistaken, are you calling from Austria? Yeah. Uh, hi, Matt. Hi, Andy. Uh, thanks for um, having me. And I'm really yeah calling in from Austria. Uh, directly at the Lansing site, so our biggest production and headquarters today. That is amazing. And as a total aside, I'm an avid skier and my skis were made in Austria. So every time I look down wow. at my skis, it says made in Austria. And I have a, I have a, I have an, there's an endearment to Austria in my mind just for that very fact. So I'm, I'm grateful that you're joining us from Austria. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, great that you have Austrian skis. We love skiing here. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Awesome. So let, let's let's get right into it. The, the Carbon Zero Tensile Program, for, for those who may not be familiar, can you just briefly describe what that program is and, and when you launched it a couple of years ago, what's the goal of the program? Yeah, so uh, Carbon Zero Tensile, um, it's basically fibers and we pr- um, introduced them in 2020 in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so we used our time there um, during lockdowns um, to think about new innovations and uh, in the sustainability area. Um, what is it exactly? So it's lifestyle, it's modal, so you can have both of the fiber types and they come with um, reduced carbon footprints and also um, offsetting, so carbon reduction programs. So basically what you get is you get a fiber with a better life cycle assessment Mm -hmm. where you also have uh, the knowledge that until the first step of the value chain, so really the spinning mills, um, the still existing carbon emissions have been offset. So you start, I always say you like, you start your story of producing a product with just a, let's call it a backpack um, without anything in there. So you still have a lot of possibilities, you know, Mm -hmm. like you are lightweight, um, you go in with, let's call it a better, um, yeah, a better feeling about Mm -hmm. the product that you create. Why did we do it? I think um, when we look and we have to think a bit about lensing per se and what's our goal and what we stand for is the last years. So I think starting 2018, 
we've done really a lot in the field of um, carbon emissions reduction and mm -hmm. um, climate change. So we've been one of the first companies within the textile sector, so whether shoes or apparel, to have science-based targets. So we are really committed to reducing our carbon footprint. Uh, and then we always thought about, okay, yeah, that's nice, you know, on a corporate level. Yeah, it's also good and a good story for maybe our investors. But what does this mean for our customers and the people within the textile and footwear um, value chain? Yeah, how can we also help them with our commitments to create products with a lower impact? And this is why we then thought about, okay, we want to offer a fiber that has reduced impacts, that has this kind of offsetting approach, because there is no better alternative at the moment. But our clear focus is reduction. So we set up the program in a way that we have internal guidelines in order to be part of the Carbon Zero um, tensile offering. You, you need to have a site or so production site that does not use coal, that um, uses yeah. renewable electricity for production, um, yeah. the overall footprint of the products before offsetting, they need to be lower than 2.5 um, kilogram of CO2 per kilogram of fiber. Um, and then you can sell the product as this. So it's not really something where you say, okay, we just do it for everything. Yeah, right. In a way, a, a little bit like, okay, we can offer this for everything and everyone. No, it is a very conscious decision to say, okay, we we also use it to say, let's reduce further. Mm. Yeah, and then you can be part of that. Yeah. I think that makes sense because, I mean, obviously – your, your current line of products are quite sustainable in and of themselves, right? And and that's why a lot of people use them. And then this program's interesting because it sounds like you went back and looked at all the energy outputs and inputs that went into making product and had to go through it meticulously. And I remind people LCAs are life cycle assessments where you're actually looking at the full nature of um, your impact on the environment. And, and obviously now those are becoming more and more required by customers, retailers, but increasingly by governments who are looking to um, to use those more and more to, to see what's happening with product and let consumers know that. But um, it, did you guys start doing this at your facility there in Austria uh, to go through the process of figuring out what, what all the inputs and outputs were and how you start to like um, kind of get at those different issues? Yeah, I mean, Austria is always as the headquarter and right. the biggest production site. I think, um, okay. yeah, the, the place where we start a lot of the things, but actually it's not limited to Austria per se. So um, it's really this life cycle assessments for the fibers. We've done this for years now, okay. and that includes our production sites um, all over the globe. So we had like a very good baseline of you know like how much energy do we use what kind of energy do we use and where are the impacts coming from um, and then we had to drill deeper into those sites and these these production facilities where we knew in a way that we can achieve um, this carbon zero program and there we then really had you know like deep down conversations also with our own suppliers not only um, for energy, but um, one of the interest, most interesting examples for me always is that, you know, we use in the production of tensile modal a chemical called caustic soda. Yeah, it's uh, quite widely used. It uses a lot of electricity. What we started um, there is talking to our own suppliers that deliver us caustic soda to discuss with them on how they can transform their own production sites and using um, renewable electricity for the production of this chemical. And I, this is for me, in a way, a bit of this ripple effect that comes when 
companies um, start really looking at um, their emissions and where they can save the most. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I just looking at the map of your locations, you are global. I mean, Andy, they're from anywhere from Hong Kong, Jakarta, uh, Taipei, Singapore to Alabama. So that tells you just the reach of Linsing. Um, uh, Caroline, I want to ask you about the partnership aspect with, with brands on the apparel and footwear side, because as Andy can attest and has, as we've all discovered through this journey is that our, our brands have an idea of, as to where they want to go, but the workforce and the personnel that's been entrusted to accomplish that is not always equipped to, to kind of map it out in, in really thoughtful ways, because it's, this is, this is high end stuff. This is critical thought kind of stuff that we are, we've been all been tasked with by uh, whether it's the the environment itself or it is it are, is our consumers and the like. How does Linsing come in and, and be that partner to help guide through? You guys are doing some really interesting things on the carbon side, um, but you might have a medium sized brand who wants to be more impactful, develop some really creative product lines utilizing Linsing, but may not know have the know how. So, how from a lay person's perspective, how do you come in and partner with brands to help them? accomplish your sustainability goals when, as Andy said, it's, it's a broad, it's kind of a broad topic that we're trying to hone down into these, you know, things that we can accomplish on in the near term basis. Yeah, no, absolute. It's uh, like sustainability. There's so many um, focus areas there and uh, so much you can do. Basically what we try to do is um, first of all, a lot of <clears throat> education, um, also to brands and retailers in a way, okay, what what are certain products that we offer um, and what's their environmental footprint, but also showing how does the product look and feel like when using our fibers, because, I mean, let's be honest, it's um, still an industry where it's super important how do things look and feel like, yeah, because we wear them and we wear our shoes also every day. Um, so that's, that's crucial for us. And then what we often do is we link them, um, to certain suppliers. Um, the, the supply chain is long. Um, it's often a little bit confusing to know where to source what. So, um, we're not only educating about, okay, what's the environmental footprint, um, or what can you save and how nice something feels and looks like, but also where can you source it? Mm. And um, uh, what are the best countries or who are the best producers and uh, how do they work with that? Um, and as an example, when we think about this carbon zero, um, we are not only, I mean, having a, a fiber with a low environmental footprint or low emissions um, that even have this offsetting. So you go in like, zero but then um what happens next so we partner up also with value chain partners in a way to say okay what can they do how do they reduce their emissions sorry give me a second <coughs> um, how do they um reduce their emissions and so at the end for a brand and retailer they have the possibility to get in contact with our business development team and they can share with them for example oh, you want to source carbon zero um, tensile fibers with maybe where the whole supply chain up to the fabrics or like um, the um, uppers um, of shoes use renewable electricity. Oh, there I have great partners here. I don't know. And I see now examples, Taiwan, Vietnam, India, China, wherever. So it's really not only about talking but also about connecting to the right people. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's so important because obviously we have so many materials in footwear, right? Um, we you, you can focus on one and that's great, but you got 60 other materials and components that go into it. Mm. And you, it, it sounds like you guys do a great job of facilitating um, kind of an ecosystem of sorts to make sure that you know who else is also working really hard on this and backing it up. I think that's the key thing now is you, you saying that you have the LCAs and the data on that is so important because, you, you know, especially now with all the consumer facing laws and, and 
telling stories about sustainability. You want to make sure that you can back it up. Um, and, you know, from, from your background, I'm just interested and curious, are you, do you have a chemistry background? Do you have a product development background? Because I'm always curious about, you know, you're, you're on the front lines of innovating and figuring out how we, how we reduce footprints. Um, um, so I'm always curious about the folks working on the back end. So maybe tell us a little bit about <laughs> yourself and your, how you got into this role. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's uh, interesting. I have uh, a background in wood sciences. All right. Um, yeah. So um, fits actually quite well to lensing because we yeah, exactly. produce our fibers um, out of wood. But um, I came here without um, a lot of knowledge about um, textiles or um, the whole industry. Um, and I have also a bachelor degrees in environmental science. So basically I come more from this direction of, uh, yeah, environmental chemistry, the raw materials. Right. Um, but I think what I've seen so far, um, I'm renting now for more, a little bit more than five years. Um, the industry is super, super exciting because there are so many opportunities and so many different materials and possibilities and, um, yeah, also collaboration potential, as you mentioned before. Yeah, it's really important to, to really work with a lot of different people to create these kind of clusters. Everyone has a little bit of uh, their own um, focus so then it uh, gives gives a very nice synergy rather than, you know, like competition. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, this is what this industry needs, particularly for sustainability, is for outsiders to become shoe insiders, right? Because um, we need that outside expertise. We need the soil science people and the, and the lumber and the wood science and the textile management people to come in and kind of educate us on the best pass forward. And so let me ask you this, who are some of the brands that you collaborate with or you're willing to share kind of what are, and what are maybe some of your favorite partnerships or collaborations that you've done over the last five years? So when, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about shoe specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Uh, shoe specific, I think what I'm also, um, and this is now not carbon zero specifically, um, but we had a very nice collaboration um, with Timberland um, mm -hmm. last year with our recycled material. Um, we have New Balance. Um, I think a lot of people are also aware that um, we have, uh, um, so we work with Alberts, the tree, I think it's called Tree Runner or so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is, we have in Europe also Kemper, for example, there was an um, Chuck Converse um, in the past made with lyosol fiber. So Adidas also, um, I think there's a lot of um, great shoes out there. I also own yeah. shoes um, made with our fibers. <laughs> so that's, uh, I think, one of the perks um, working, um, let's call it also in the shoe shoe and apparel industry that you know always where to find products um, mm -hmm. with uh, our tensile fibers. Yeah, and then I think in apparel, it's uh, also very broad. But yeah, I mean, shoes is always very exciting. Yeah? That's awesome. One of the ni n nice things is that most of the times, you know, you can just wash them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is exciting, for sure. Well, I mean, it may, we may have saved time by asking you who you don't work with, because it seems <laughs> like you have a lot of partnerships. <laughs> Yeah, and I know there's more and more companies that are coming in lensing day by day, um, and we work closely with their team here, Sharon and some other folks here in the U.S. side, which are fantastic. And I always say, you know, you can tell how good an organization is by them not trying to sell you a product, but try to sell you a solution, right? So they come in and they say, what's the problem? They're not saying, like, here's our thing. They're saying, what are you trying to do? Okay, here's some ideas. Here's what we can do. Here's somebody else that might could help you. So I think that's what we're really talking about today is the ecosystem that if we want to get to renewable resources and renewable energy that are powering our industry, we have to work together on that stuff. Those things are not, you know, no one alone can invest. 
unless you're Elon Musk and you just throw money at something <laughs> like Twitter, right? But no, no one on their own can just solve the problems, and it requires mills working together, uh, organizations working together, like Textile Exchange, Leather Working Group, all these external great groups that are that are trying to set standards and move people forward. It takes it takes that and the brands and the retailers to um, to to be willing to uh, adopt these things. Like you know, it's is um, as we move forward more and more, um, the adoption of the materials and, and hopefully we'll get to new techniques as well. I think that's that's one thing that we'll, we'll try to look at this year is construction techniques because we know how important the recyclability is now. Um, and I know Lensing even has, you know, recycling um, options now where they're pulling more in for circularity. So Lensing to me is a great story because they're full service, right? They, they have fibers from from biofibers from nature tree fibers they're working on like looking at their carbon footprint and how they get down to zero um they're they're empowering other people and working with mills so it's kind of this this holistic approach that they have to their entire ecosystem and partner so um anytime lensing comes across my desk or email it's something i open up right away and see what's happening because i'm always encouraged um, yeah, I mean, the other thing uh, I should point out to our listeners um, and thank Caroline and their team for this is that they hosted the first uh, Black Footwear Forum regional meetup in New York City last mm-hmm. year, and we're talks of doing it again uh, this year in 2023. And so even being a part of the, com- the broader footwear community here in the States has been uh, very encouraging for us. And so we're grateful for that, even as small as like offering up your amazing space in, in Manhattan. So thank you for that. Um, we, we're super grateful for the partnership. Yeah, thanks for the collaboration. I think we're always uh, happy to have these kind um, of events and work together. And uh, as Andy um, said, our colleague Sharon, um, who's uh, also in New York office, she's uh, super excited and motivated um, to do different collaborations and work with um, different players of the supply chain as well as you. So I think that's uh, just a thanks that I can give back to you guys. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, And we appreciate you coming on the show and talking a bit. It's the first time we've had a a tree or forestry scientist on the show. So you're the, you're the first one. Call your mom, let her know, call your family. Uh, it's only taken 400 episodes. In seven years. <laughs> um, but we appreciate the work that you're doing and for, for coming on today and sharing a little about what it is so that more people can understand um, what's available. But there is a lot of work to the back end. There's a lot of folks like Carolyn who are doing, interesting high-end science to try to get us uh, to move forward. But you have to work with these folks that are, I always say, like, if you're allowing your factory to determine your materials, they go into your product. I'm I'm not sure that's a model that's going to last much longer. You have to know your suppliers Mm -hmm. and work with them if you really want to work on your environmental footprint. Um, So so with that, we appreciate um, you coming on today and, and lensing for their support of our sustainability program. Um, and folks, you can learn more about um, all things sustainability on shoesustainability.com. A ton of research, uh, reports, uh, data points um, on that site. Um, and as always, we appreciate you listening to the Shoe and Show. New episodes come out every single Monday. We talk about a range of different things impacting our industry, new ideas, new ways forward. So we appreciate you listening. Um, you can go back to shoeandshow.com for the entire catalog. Um, and you can you can search by keyword like sustainability to listen to other episodes from, from other leaders and experts as well. So with that, folks, thanks again for listening. Um, hope your, uh, your winter and, and spring coming up are bright, happy, and healthy. And with that, Shoein is out. Shoein has been brought to you by the FDRA the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.